Hey everybody, welcome back to Coda Responsive Website with Bootstrap 3. This video is called Styling the Carousel. In the previous video, we marked up all the HTML for the carousel to get everything set up and ready to go, but we didn't see anything because we still needed to work on some CSS, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Firstly, I want to explain something about the carousel that I think is important for you to know. So in our HTML, the carousel wrapper right here, we added the carousel items right here, three of them, but we didn't see anything on our website that we're working on. And why is that? We have so much HTML here, but nothing's showing up. Well, the way that we're doing it uh, in this course is we're using background images. These aren't uh, HTML images using the uh, HTML image tag. We're actually using background images in CSS. And I wanted to do it that way because I wanted to use media queries to find out the browser size we are using to swap the background image for uh, a more optimized version rather than just serving up this big 1400 pixel wide image and just scaling it down as we're resizing the browser. That's really bad practice and we don't want to do that. So I wanted to use background images. That being said, that's the reason why we are not seeing anything in our website so far. We added all this carousel HTML, but nothing's showing up. That's because we need to use CSS to add the background image. However, if you didn't want to use background images and you wanted to use HTML images, you don't really need to add any CSS at all. You just need to add an image to your item in your HTML. So for example, outside of the carousel caption, I could add an image. I'm just going to add a dummy image here, a placehold it image. And I'm going to save that and I'll show you. Now we have a, a, a fully functioning carousel. This is an image now. This isn't a background image like in the actual website. So here's the carousel caption with our indicators and the carousel controls. Like That's all there. We did it all. It's perfect. But we just didn't add the images. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. If I added images just like this to each of these items, you'll see that the carousel is fully functioning and looks almost great. They're just crappy looking images. So uh, that being said, we're going to move on and actually put our awesome looking background images that we exported in Photoshop into our carousel items. And we're going to start playing with some media queries so that we can get this uh, working on different devices. So let's open our styles.css folder in our includes includes CSS styles.css and go down to the carousel label. We're going to put our carousel styles under there so that we can uh, make things look awesome and be organized. Okay, so first let's add some styles here. Let's select our my carousel. And let's select all of the items, all of the uh, divs with the class of item within my carousel. And give it a height of 400 pixels. So we want to give all the items the height of 400 pixels because um, that's how tall we want. That's how tall the image will be, the default background image. We're going to use the medium carousel image as the default. Uh, so meaning people who don't have access to media queries, the browsers that can't use media queries, like Internet Explorer, older versions of uh, certain browsers, can't, um, they don't function with media queries. So you can't resize your browser and see the layout change. So we need to give them a default uh, background image to, or a set of background images to display so that they can actually enjoy the experience of seeing carousel items as well. So we're gonna do that by adding the styles here. And we want the height to be 400 pixels. So let's move on to slide one. If you remember previously, we gave all of the items their individual IDs so that we can select them here in our CSS and give them their own uh, individual background images. So background URL. And we're going to select uh, from our CSS, styles.css file in our CSS folder. We need to reference the carousel items. We need to reference these. And so the way that we're able to access this folder, these files, from here is by doing this. And I'll explain what it is in a moment. 
carousel uh, medium 01.jpg. So this means go up one folder. So navigate to the parent folder. So we're in our CSS folder currently. We need to go up one folder. So now we're in our includes folder, but our images still is not in the includes folder. We need to go up another one. So we go up one more folder right here. So that brings us up into our my website folder, the root folder of this project. And that allows us to jump down into the images folder. So dot dot slash dot dot slash is jump up two directories and then jump down into the images folder where we can access carousel medium 01.jpg. And we're going to use a little shorthand here and we're going to have the background position of this slide be top left. And background repeat will be no repeat. We don't want this background image to repeat. We just want one instance of it. Save that and go back to your website and refresh. It should be there as the default background image. And you can see here that when we resize to a larger browser size, it doesn't fill out properly because the background image isn't the right size for this large layout. And if you were to scale down, it looks funny. It's off center. Now you could theoretically change that by instead of having it be top left repeat, you could say dot top center, no repeat, and then the image will actually be centered. But and you can see here it's more in the center. But we have separate assets for each of these browser sizes so that we can load the proper image instead of just using this single image and having it load. Say you were on a phone and you loaded up this website you're going to load this really big 940 pixel wide image for a 320 pixel wide screen. It's bad practice and it's uh, going to chew up their bandwidth. So don't do that. All right, slide two, copy and paste for slide two and three. You just have to change a couple of these numbers, medium two and medium three, save. And now you're, let's go back to this size. You'll have each of the slides in there. One, two, and three. So now we're actually going to use some media queries to load the proper image sizes for the different browsers or the different browser sizes. So down to our media queries and a quick explanation of what media queries are. Anything in between these two curly braces within this media query, these styles will load depending on what the uh, what is between these brackets. So media max width 480 pixels. So this means that if your viewport, your browser width is no larger than 480 pixels, these styles within these curly braces will load. Same thing with this. If the maximum width is no larger than 768 pixels, these styles will load. And if the minimum width of your viewport is 1200 pixels, then load these styles. So that being said, let's add some media query styles to our style sheet for this carousel. So for the large desktop, that is this one right here where there's some edges here that the background image don't quite fill out. We're gonna add within this media query, uh, the same actually what we added up here. So just copy this and don't rewrite everything, paste it. I'm just going to tab this in so you can see a bit better. And the height is actually going to be 500 pixels. And you just need to change these to large, large two and large three. If you save that and refresh with your browser window, window bigger, you'll see that the background image fills out perfectly. So you have your medium and you have your large. So now we need to add the small for the smaller browsers. So that would be max width 768 pixels. So basically, we don't need to use this one for the carousel because we're just going to say if your browser is a maximum width of 768 pixels, so everything below 768, load these styles. So in this case, we're going to load the small carousel images for everything 768 pixels wide and smaller. We need to change the height as well to 310 pixels. So save that, go back and refresh. So now 
you should actually have loaded, there you go, uh, the smallest image. So you have your medium, large, or rather large, medium, then small, just like that. So that's uh, how you use the media queries for the background images. So now we're gonna add a few, mo few more styles to make this carousel look like it does here because you can see there are some differences. There's, it's not quite the same. So let's do that. Let's go back up to our carousel styles. So select carousel, the class of carousel. Actually, even better, let's be more specific, my carousel and give it a margin top of 60 pixels. So now if we refresh, you'll see this will jump down. And the reason why is because nothing on this page recognizes this navigation bar because this navigation bar is position fixed. So it's taken out of the flow of the website and it's like nobody knows that it's there. It's, that's why it's able to stick at the top of the browser and scroll with us rather than stay above everything in the uh, within the website. So that means that this carousel will actually, this thinks that it's the first element on the page. It pops up here and sits at the very top of the browser and we don't want that. We wanted it to come down. So 60 pixels, we give it a margin top of 60 pixels and it pops down here so that it uh, gives a little bit of breathing, breathing room in between the nav and the carousel. So next, we're going to have the carousel caption be slightly different. It's uh, currently it's a little too small, the font size is a little too small, so we're gonna bump it up to let's say 24 pixels. So now if I refresh, you can see the font size has resized to larger uh, font size, but the header is too small, it doesn't look good. So we're gonna actually select the carousel caption and then the level four headings within it and give it the font size of 32 pixels. So it bumps it up. There we go, bootstrap three and all the other ones, they look good. So that is it for the carousel. So just a really quick run through of what we did in the CSS. In our carousel section of our CSS, we styled the carousel, brought, down the, brought it down 60 pixels, bumped up the font size, we gave a default background image, the medium background image for the carousel. And then down in our media queries, if your browser size was larger than 1200 pixels or smaller than 768, then load up some different styles. So we changed the height of the carousel and gave different background images. And same or likewise with the uh, landscape phone to portrait tablet media queries change the height and the background images. And now we have a really beautiful, awesome carousel that works with the right font size and it works across all devices, looks real nice. However, this doesn't look good. Now I'm just looking at it here. This doesn't look good to me at all. Works good on all these other ones, but I'm not cool with that. You can't read anything on that first one. So good thing I was doing a review. We can actually change that real quick and easy. So in your MaxWood 768, we need to change the font size because we just bumped it up in the default font size. We need to change it so that it works on smaller devices. So let's select the carousel caption and bring the font size down to 16 pixels. And let's also select the carousel caption I cannot type level four heading and change the font size to 22 pixels. Save that and go back, refresh. There it is, looks awesome. We did it. So now if you were to change the browser size, bumps back up to the other sizes for the other browser sizes and then down for the mobile devices. Looks awesome. Okay. So that's it for this video. And in the next one, get ready because we're gonna start styling or rather coding the HTML for the big fancy callout. 
So I will see you there, my friends.